Bombay! Bombay! Hi, this is Ron from POC Culture. Philippa, so great to speak with you. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, wonderful. I have to share um, this Funko Pop oh, of you as Eliza. This sits in my daughter's bedroom. She is a passionate musical theater fan. And um, seeing you in Hamilton was like a, a light bulb that went off. She dressed as you as, uh, as you for Halloween. Um, oh, I so I had to share that. And I know that you hear a lot of these types of stories. Um, you shared that incredible viral video of that little Asian girl pointing out uh, you as Hamilton. Um, how much does that mean to you to have such an impact um, to so many people? It means everything. It It's the thing that feeds me and inspires me in the moments when, you know, this this industry and this this profession is so crazy. There's so many ups and downs. And hearing stories, hearing from fans, um, the positivity is just overwhelming. And I'm just so grateful for it. That's great. Well, I appreciate your positivity. Um, obviously, you've been in the industry for a while. You're still accomplished, um, especially in musical theater. Have you seen, especially in that industry, um, over the last few years, uh, things continue to improve and have meaningful change for more uh, diverse opportunities? Yeah, I mean, especially since I first started out and you know, since being a kid and seeing what was on television and what stories were being told in the movies and on stage, you know, um, I think that we've come a long way. I think that we still have a lot of work to do, but I think that, you know, what is very clear is that um, not only are we striving to tell diverse stories with diverse characters and diverse actors, but that we're honing in on the new generation of storytellers, of directors and set designers and you know editors and DPs and you know people coming at it from all different angles um, that we're really like educating young people to be able to do this job and and tell their own personal stories. Yes, and it's so important. I'm glad you brought up so many different options and and roles in the industry and all the industries because what's been really impressive about your career is that of course you've had an incredible meteoric rise in in theater, but I've really appreciated how you've really uh, made it an effort to do a lot of different things and show your versatility in TV, film, and of course, um, with Audible and this voiceover. Did you really make a, a concerted effort to pursue different kinds of projects to show that versatility? Um, in that, I sort of like put it into the stars that I've always wanted to do that. Um, I think, you know, I, I think that I've made an effort to be a good collaborator and to be good at my job. Um, so I think it's led me to rooms that have led me to other rooms that have led me to other rooms. And, you know, I get to do film and TV and work in theater. Um, the theater was where I first started out and, you know, it's really my first love, but I love collaboration. I just find it to be so invigorating. Um, you know, it's like, it's like that exciting feeling of, of, you know, being in a room for the first time and working with new people and like working together to, to make something, there's nothing more exciting to me than that. And I can't believe that I get to make it my job and my livelihood. I think that's so crazy and I feel so incredibly lucky. And I also feel like, you know, I've put in a lot of hard work these past 10 plus years. Um, and, you know, I'm I'm grateful for it. I'm, I'm glad that I pushed myself so that I could, you know, have freedom to do all sorts of kinds of different projects. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of collaboration, um, this is your third time collaborating with uh, author Lily Chu. Um, and and through Audible, you've done several projects, including the, the Takedown, which is pretty exciting. Um, what do you like about Lily's work that really resonates with you? And could you talk a little bit about the process of collaborating with her for these projects? Sure. I mean, it started out with her first book, The Stand-In, which um, I was immediately charmed by. I loved that there was, you know, um, a, a half- Asian half Chinese writer who was also writing Chinese characters and, and mixed race characters as well in her stories. I just felt seen in a way that I hadn't seen been felt been felt felt been felt seen. <laughs> what am I trying to say for a very long time? And um, 
you know, it was like, there was like a sense of humor to it and um, a very specific voice to the main character that I thought was just so charming and interesting. And it was fun. It was just like really fun to read out loud. Um, you know, and, and from that point I had signed on to do two more books and I was pleasantly surprised when um, the second one came around and it was like totally different, but still in the same world. Um, you know, it, but it had its own vibe and, and that was amazing. And now this one, you know, I'm just so pleased to see such like, you know, different stories, similar characters, but like very specific situations to what these characters are going through. Um, and it was just like so refreshing. And, and I really related to D and the, the main character of Takedown and her story. And, you know, she's in her thirties and she's like trying to figure out how to navigate difficult things in her life and ultimately has a lot of growing and learning to do. Yeah. And I think that's great that we get to see through these different stories, like you said, very different settings, different characters. It really shows like sometimes there's a tendency in entertainment where Asians play the same kind of roles over and over. And um, it's great to see that kind of versatility through these stories. Um, you talked about the character D. I really liked the part where there's like uh, work D. She says uh, like in work, she's Dayu. And then in uh, you know, personal life, she's D. And there's that that duality that I think, especially as, uh, you know, Asians um, who are working, you know, in the U.S. or, or Canada face these types, th that type of conflict. Uh, how much did that resonate with you? How much do, do you feel like that in your own per personal and career life? Yeah, I mean, I think like, you know, when we when we speak about diversity and inclusion, at least just from my standpoint in storytelling and in this um, profession that I've chosen, like it's, yes, it's about acknowledging a group of people and, and sort of shining a light on a group of people, but it's also about shining a light on specific like humans, like real characters that, that they're not just there to represent a group, but like they represent themselves and who they are. And, you know, I think what's cool about these three books and, and, you know, the character of D in the last one, like, I feel like all the main characters of these books would be friends, but they're all different. Like they have different ways of dealing things, like dealing with things. They'd probably be like holding each other's feet under the fire for certain things, like being like, no, no, no. Like you always do that thing. Like, you know, try harder. You know, I just feel like they would be like bolstering it and, and sort of inspiring each other, but they're all very different people. And so I think just, just as I continue doing this, I'm just interested in like, you know, the, the part of diversity, like I bring my own story to something and my own, like just my body itself and my history and my ancestry, like it exists there, there's your diversity, but the specificity within that, the humanness, the empathy that we can gain from seeing those stories and seeing stories told in these very specific and, and nuanced ways, that's where the fun, beautiful work happens, where we get to see into a soul and not only see their background and, and their genetic makeup, but also see like who they are as people in the world that they're living in and, and learn something about ourselves because of that. And I feel like the more specific you can get with your characters, um, no matter what their racial background or eth ethnic background is, that you're seeing humans and, and you're seeing um, a person, a character in front of you that is that is ultimately, hopefully gonna teach you something about yourself. Yes, Philippa, you're speaking my language. I totally believe that in that, those specificity, there's universality that we all can, can relate to and learn from. Yeah, um, yeah I, I stole that from, from someone else. It's not my own. Who did you steal it from? That's so good. <laughs> From Camp Powers, he's actually the director uh, of a few films, including um, he worked on Soul and and okay. uh, Spider Verse. But he he always talks about that, and uh, I always remembered that. I think um, he talks about in the industry, like not to shy away from these very specific stories, because there were so many years people used to think like, oh, people then too many people can't relate to that. But it's like actually we find that humanity you're talking about, and I think we can all connect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think 
I would love to hear about your process a little bit. If you could peel back the curtain of like narrating an audiobook, um, it's no small task, right? 44 chapters in this one and an epilogue. Um, could you talk a little bit about your process, like what it takes, how you prepare and and how many takes does it, does it take to get through all these chapters? Yeah, well, it's um, it requires just a lot of like, um, just specificity and homework, quite, quite frankly. Like I, there were a lot of different characters. I made voice memos on my phone, you know, like going through, I get like a, a list of characters. I get the actual story, I get a summary, um, just like a bunch of tools to help me prepare. And I make like voice memos on my phone. I will just go through each character. I'm like, all right, this is, you know, D this is Teddy and I sort of like go through each person so that I have a reference in my phone because you know you're reading a character appears in the first chapter and then they appear in chapter 20 and you're like what did I do so thank god I have you know a technician and a director helping me you know find that you know, they can pull it up but I think like having a template helps me because then once I get into the booth I'm not worried about my French accent I'm not worried about oh is this character, are they the high voice or is this character the low voice? Like I can just sort of like reference it and then go and have economy when it comes to that. And then because I've done all that work, you know, finding the nuance and the excitement and, you know, just the, the, the fun qualities of just changing up your vocal quality and um, using that as a tool to tell the story in a different way, getting different takes of different lines, you know, that stuff can happen while we're reading. But yeah, it's, it's like very tedious and it's a little lonely, you know, you're in a booth by yourself, <laughs> but I do get to play all the characters, which is really fun. Um, but I think there is a level of spontaneity that you have to muster within yourself because when you're in a scene on stage or in film, you're working with someone else. And so there's like, you just don't know what they're gonna do. So there's like a level of spontaneity and being in the moment and being present that I think happens naturally if you're really, if you're really listening. Um, but, you know, recording in a booth by yourself, playing all the characters, you have to remember that the audience is hearing the story for the first time. So the more that I can really play the objectives and obstacles and perspectives of each character and really differentiate between you know, two people who are in a scene talking to each other, the more clarity that we find. And ultimately, I think it's just more fun. It's just more fun to hear. Yeah, uh, very amazing. And it's great to hear that intricate process that you have. Um, on a more broad level, you talked about how you would view the main characters of these last three books, they could be friends. And I heard you in this amazing interview with Nightline um, where you said that like a common thread amongst your characters is that they live in a world that doesn't hold space for them and that that makes them resilient. Uh, and that really res like just impressed upon me. What would be your advice to, you know, like my daughter and other girls who are inspired by you, who want to follow in your path, um, who are living in this world that doesn't necessarily have space for them? Well, um, I... I think, you know, I think something that helped me growing up when I didn't necessarily feel like I was being seen or, or heard um, was just to up, like, turn up the volume on my own level of listening that, um, you know, like, there's a lot of learning that can be done in those moments and feeling like you're not being understood or seen, um, I, I think like, yeah, like it, it can create a level of resilience in all of us that we're like, no, like we have something to offer here. You know, we're, we're all in the soup together, all of humanity. And the more that we can listen to each other, understand each other, you know, that's step one. And then it's really, I guess, about finding what finding out what you love the most in the world and finding out how you can be useful to people. You know, I think there's a lot of different kinds of artists and actors out there. And um, I think I've been lucky that I've been in rooms that have really brought out an activist in me and um, wanting to do work that is not only entertaining, but has a message 
can inspire people, can inspire people to think in a different way. I think that's the beauty of art, that um, you know, it's really about that audience participation, that missing element to a piece of art. Like you need, you need to put your own perspective on it as an audience member for the thing to work. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's my advice <laughs> for a very. Oh, I appreciate it. I mean, speaking of being in it together, you know, I do have to ask you, we're in a film, One True Loves with Simu Lu, and uh, it must have been, how much fun was it for the two of you to, to be able to like star together in, in a rom-com, which we don't get to see too often? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Simu is such a talented guy and he's like, I was so, um, I was so grateful that we got to work together. And, um, you know, I think the more that, the more that I do this, I just feel like there's, I, I just feel so lucky because I get to string along like all these beautiful little pearls of projects um, and, and people that I've gotten to work with um, who I'm inspired by and, you know, I might be a fan of, and then you get to work with them and you're like, oh my gosh, like, they're so lovely <laughs> <laughs> and they love what they do. And that's also inspiring. So yeah, yeah, so lovely. Great to hear. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's so great to chat with you. I really enjoyed um, the takedown and, and the last few books that you've done and can't wait to see what other areas you continue to expand in. Thank you for inspiring so many. Thank you.